I glance at the time. It's still early in the evening. What should I do? Well, let's see what Yuna is up to. I feel like doing something active, but I don't just want to lift weights. I've heard the recreation center always has lots of activities going on. There's bound to be something there I can do. As I walk in, the first thing I notice is how much natural light shines into the room. The facility is huge, but it doesn't feel overwhelming. There are signs leading to the different gymnasiums and even a pool. There's a locker room nearby, and I take advantage of the facility to change into my gym clothes. As I continue to explore, I spot tennis courts filled with students playing matches. A few students crowd the sidelines waiting for a court to be open. Yuna is among them. She's standing alone, stretching out her arms. Gotta loosen up. I head over and greet her. Hey, Yuna! Hi! You are adorable, by the way. She seems surprised. I didn't expect to see you here. I didn't expect to be here, to be honest. She chuckles. So, you play tennis? A little, just for fun. Do you play? I'd only play if someone invited me to. Not so much on my own, not much of a tennis player myself. I see. Table tennis, maybe. But I do enjoy the game, it is quite enjoyable to watch. So have you been waiting long for a court to free up? Not too long. Plus, I'm next on the wait list, so once the court opens up, I'll be able to play. Who are you playing against? She shrugs. Anyone who's available. How about you and I play a game then? She suddenly seems shy. Sure, but I have to warn you, I'm a bit rusty. I haven't played much this season. What do you mean by this season? Let's have a fun match. That just means it's a better chance for me to win. We'll be evenly matched then. Don't be modest. I see green, I go for it. I think you're just being modest. I bet you're a really skilled player who consistently wipes the floor with your opponents. She blinks in surprise. Thanks, but what gives you that impression? I'm the main character and... Pixel Fade gave me the option to pick this? I shrug. Just a feeling that I have one of my superpowers as the MC. You must have a lot of faith in me. Not, no. I can't play with no equipment, though. Sure you can. Use your hands, swat at the ball, it'll be fine. It'll work out just great. Might hurt a little bit, but... Is there somewhere I can borrow a racket? actually have an extra you can use. I'm going to get crushed, aren't I, if you have not one but two rackets. Great. Thanks. A court opens up, and Yuna and I take our place on opposite sides. Since you're feeling a little anxious, why don't you serve first? Oh, no, that's okay. Please, I insist. She smiles her thanks and nods. As we settle into place, I give my racket a few experimental swings. Once ready, I nod. Yuna tosses the ball into the air and pulls back her arm. That is an intense look on her face. With a resounding crack, her racket connects with the ball in a powerful serve. The ball whizzes towards me at lightning speed. Um, return... I barely managed to clip the ball. It lobs over the net, but veers out of bounds. What the heck was that? I'm sorry. For what? Having a good serve? Why is that something to be sorry for? I glance at Yuna's worried face and snap out of my daze. It's fine. I wasn't expecting that, but I'll be expecting your next one. She smiles, then prepares for her next serve. Fifteen love. Love is one way of putting this. 
She bounces the ball a few times, preparing herself before the serve. Then she throws it overhead. Her next serve is just as powerful. The ball zooms towards me. Uh, return. I catch it with the tip of my racket. The ball flies erratically, but makes it over the net. Yuna smoothly parries it back. The longer we play, the more I'm able to keep up a volley. Yuna's face is set in deep concentration, but she easily counters my hits every time the ball flies over the net. If this is how she plays when she's out of practice, then I'm not sure I'm ready to face her at her peak. Be terrifying. Still, the game is over before I know it. I couldn't compare to her, and she won 6-2. to two. She gave me those, those two games that I won. That was a good game. You did really well. You're being too kind. That was clearly a one-sided game. I know you gave me those two wins. I'm not sure I believe that you're out of practice. You were amazing out there. Eunice's cheeks are flushed from both the match and from embarrassment. Uh, thank you, but I really don't deserve such praise. Yes, you do in everything you do. You have nothing to be embarrassed about. Even at your worst, you're still better than me. That's not true. Yes, it is. We just proved it. Are you part of the school league? She shakes her head no. You should really consider trying out. You think so? Definitely. She seems pleased, but shrugs. Thanks, but I'm not sure I have time for that kind of commitment. Hey, are you guys finished? We turn and face a pair of students walking onto the court. Oh, yes, we just finished. I got my ass kicked. Actually, we were wondering if you two would be interested in a doubles match. Maybe. Can we put a wager on it? We're going to win. Doubles match? Yuna and I glance at each other and both break into grins. Sounds like fun. Yeah, let's do it. Great. You guys can serve first. Good luck. You have no idea what you guys just got yourselves into. I retrieve the ball and toss it to Yuna. She catches it and preps to serve. I don't think these two know what they're in for. Okay, with gym class out of the way, let's see what Yuna is up to. I dial Yuna's number and wait for her to answer. Hello? Oh, she picks up quick. Hey, Yuna, it's Siler. I was wondering if you've got some time to hang out. Maybe we could have another tennis match? I'd love to, but I've got class in about half an hour. I was about to stop and grab a coffee. Would you like to join me? Why aren't you in the cafe already? I'm here waiting. Yeah, that sounds great. I'll meet you in the cafe. Okay, see you soon. Always got to make time for a cup of coffee. I, we hang up, and I walk to the cafe. Yuna is already there by the time I arrive. She sits at a table near the window. After ordering myself a coffee, I join her. She smiles in acknowledgement as I sit down. So, what class do you have next? Just one of my PHPT degree requirement classes. It's not one of the more interesting ones, so I'm not too excited about going. Every program has that. Do you have any more classes today? Nope. All done for the day. That must be nice. Her eyes sparkle as she sips her coffee. I mean, who, whose eyes don't sparkle when they sip their coffee? So, how are you spending your free time between classes? Anything fun? Well, I, I, I do like to spend some time having coffee with this one girl I really met. She kind of does some stuff with the SBA. She's in the PHPT program, and let me tell you, she is amazing. Hmm. It varies. I'll go to the library to study or chill in the pilot's lounge. Generally, I like to spend some quality time with my gear. Ah. She glances at the teal stripes on my uniform as she takes a sip of her coffee. 
what made you decide to be a pilot? Well, my dad was an engineer, and I grew up building mechs with him. He and I actually built Eagle together. Eagle must be really special to you then. Yeah. So why didn't you go into engineering? My dad always wanted to be a pilot, but he was colorblind, so he could never become one. He always encouraged me to be a pilot instead. I never even considered doing anything else. Don't get me wrong. I'm not doing it. I'm not just doing it because my dad wanted me to. I love piloting. It's just something I always knew I wanted to do. What about you? I actually almost joined the pilot program. Really? What changed your mind? She hesitates. The words are on her lips, but she's debating whether or not to say them. There were a lot of factors, but the biggest reason I chose to study PHPT is because pilot health and safety is frequently overlooked. Pilots go through a rigorous training process, and people don't consider the long-term effects that training has on a person, especially when you're talking about G-Force training and the like. She's got a fair point. Being a pilot can take more of a toll on your body than you know. You're scaring me now. You can check my health any day. Jeez, lighten up, negative Nancy. Well, you can check on my well-being any day. I feel safer just knowing you're here to look out for me. She blushes. I'm good at doing that. I'll try my best. So pilot health and physiotherapy. Does that encompass mental health as well as physical? Yes, definitely. Most people tend to forget that a healthy mind is just as important as a healthy body. But an unhealthy mind can just be as destructive, if not more so, than an unhealthy body. And that's just going for things in general, not just piloting. Ask more about pilot mental health or physical health. Let's go on with the mental health here. That's probably a bigger factor of the piloting program, much like it's a big factor in life. You need to have a sound mind and don't ever be afraid to ask for help with that. I'll admit, I'm a little guilty of forgetting that myself. Is there currently a large emphasis on mental health screenings for pilots, or is this an ever-evolving process? It's an ever-evolving process, and unfortunately, it usually takes a tragedy before people realize there's a flaw in the system. Again, goes to show that with anything. Really? She nods. Obviously, a pilot has to pass a mental health evaluation before he can earn his license. But that screening needs to be more rigorous and more frequent. Because mental health can change at any time. What do you mean? Some mental illnesses are easily diagnosed, but some are more tricky and some can disappear and reappear, like depression or addictions. Those are hard conditions to spot because for the most part, they must be self-reported. But if a pilot knows that he may lose his license because he has this condition, he may not report it. It could reach a level where he would not only endanger himself, but those around him. Shouldn't his colleagues or teammates report him if they notice the pilot's changed behavior? They absolutely should. But the way the current system works, the responsibility falls on the pilot himself and not his peers. Pilots who are on anxiety or depression medication can also be disqualified from earning their license just because of the medication use alone. Isn't that kind of like punishing the pilot for treating his condition? There are arguments for both sides. The pilot is being punished for treating his condition, and because he uses the medication, he should be considered to be in sound mind. On the other hand, someone who is using the medication has a greater potential for significant underlying psychiatric or psychologic problems, and the side effects of medication is always unpredictable, so they're considered a risk. Especially because most of those side effects even say, or any of the warnings on some of these will say, do not operate heavy machinery, and I would think a gear would constitute as heavy machinery. J just a little bit. Huh. I guess both sides make sense. Which side are you on? Yuna's eyes flash. I'm a strong...
strong advocate for reform. We need pilots to understand the severity of these conditions, and we can't encourage an environment of secrecy because that is what puts lives at risk. Why do you look angry at me? I just asked a question. She pauses, then her cheeks flush. Sorry, I didn't mean to yell at you. I can... It's okay. I, I see you have a very, very strong opinion about this. I'm not the bad guy here, I promise. I'm just asking an innocent question. You're okay. It's okay. I'm just glad someone like you is here to fight for what's best for us pilots. Yuna checks the time. Ah, uh, I need to get going. Sorry for lecturing you. Wasn't a lecture, it was merely a discussion, and I enjoyed every second of it. No, don't be. I think it's great that you're so passionate about this. Passion is what creates change. She smiles brightly. I'll see you later, okay? Yeah. See you. She gathers her things and leaves. I finish up my coffee, then follow her out of the cafe. Now, I wonder what her response is if we ask about physical health, because mental health is always a big thing. Let's run it back and take a look at the physical health aspect. Okay, let's take a look at her stance on pilot physical health. When I saw these two options, I was curious about physical, but I thought mental might be a little more impactful to her. But let's ask about the physical health and see her stance on it. While that may be true, aren't the physical qualifications for earning your pilot's license very rigorous? Yuna nods. Yes, the pilot must pass a physical, and that includes your past medical history and family history screening. That's a little unfair, isn't it? I mean, it's not my fault if my grandmother had diabetes or if my father had high blood pressure. No, it's not your fault. And generally speaking, a person isn't disqualified based on a potential. It's still good to be aware, though, so you can take preventative measures if need be. I suppose that's true. Besides, those screenings are more to spot if you have anything that could cause a sudden disabling condition, such as a heart arrhythmia. You can be disqualified if you don't reach the minimum height requirement, too. Well, it's a good thing Silo doesn't have to worry about that. I smirk. I think I'm good on that. Yuna giggles. I didn't know that they were enforced so... They, I didn't know that they enforced it so strictly, though. But can't you just purchase a frame with the cockpit seat for your height? Sort of. Companies can manufacture cockpit seats to accommodate a smaller person. So there's no issue? Well, these smaller seat configurations aren't approved by the United Center Robotics Committee yet. While the manufacturers are pushing to remove the minimum height requirement, the UCC won't approve it until they are provided enough conclusive data which proves safety isn't compromised. Then it falls on the manufacturers to collect that data. Yes, that's the work in progress right now. She looks thoughtful. Although, I've heard the UCC is being particularly resistant to amending the minimum height rule. They keep requesting more and more data, even though what has been presented technically passes their current standards. But still, you always want to have more research and more information to back up the data. If you're doing this in a small test, you really don't want to rely on this when it's going, you know, worldwide. Hmm. What's your thought on this? I think that the UCC has all the right to be stringent in their process. There can be no compromises when it comes to pilot safety. I am so glad we are on the same page here. Besides, the UCC isn't against changing the rule. They just want enough comprehensive data to make a well-informed decision. Yuna checks the time. Ah, uh, I need to get going. Sorry for lecturing you. Nah, no, no problem. I actually kind of like that mental health aspect of it, and I'm going to keep going forward using that option, but it's good to know about these other rules that are going on within the piloting community. It's cool to learn a little bit more about this world that we're a part of. Yuna is already waiting for me at the library. A tablet with the SBA logo is clutched in her hand. She smiles and breathes a sigh of relief when she sees me. Oh, good. You're still wearing your uniform. I forgot to tell you yesterday to wear it, and remembered too late to text you. I mean, I did have school today, so I kind of figured we would need to wear this to the interview. 
Oh, I was so preoccupied on what I would say today that I forgot to think about what I'd wear. No worries. I hope my voice sounds more confident than I feel. I'm a little nervous for this interview. Yuna notices the waver in my voice. She places a hand on my shoulder. She touched me. The heat of her hand soothes my nerves and I relax a little bit. Okay, well, are you ready to go? Yeah. She starts towards the bus stop when I stop her. I can drive us. Hey, hey now she's, she's more excited than when we saw her in the Mayu route. Her cheeks turn pink, but she grins widely. I'm immediately ri reminded of how her face lit up the last time she saw my bike. It's, it's very pretty. That would be great. I know you'd be excited about it, too. I lead her to my bike, and we both hop on with ease. My phone is already in my hand by the time I get outside. Let's see if anyone's free. Oh, hey, Yuna. I'm on my way to grab something to eat when I pass by the campus bookstore. I have a lot of CINY swag at home, but I don't have anything from Ace yet. It wouldn't hurt to take a look and see what they have. Maybe Nikki would like something from here, too. Gotta get us all the Ace Academy swag. I walk in. The cashier counters are right by the entrance. As I go further inside, I can turn either into the clothing section or the books section. Let's check out the clothes. I'm here for some swag. There are racks of t-shirts, sweaters, hoodies, etc. All in different sizes with the Ace Academy school name and logo on them. There are even Ace Academy baby clothes. I browse the t-shirt section and spot one I like. It's got the Ace logo in the center and teal stripes around the edges. Kind of like your uniforms. I'd wear that. Next, I check out the hoodies and immediately spot the perfect one for Nikki. It's pink and has the Ace logo on the top corner. I grab the hoodie for Nikki and the t-shirt for me, then stand in line to check out. I'm zoning out while waiting for my turn in line when a familiar voice interrupts me. Hey there. You found me. I spin around and see Yuna's smiling face standing in line behind me. I'm glad you're in a better mood than after the interview. She glances at my items and holds back a laugh. That's a pretty hoodie you have there. Thanks, I thought it would work well on me. She's holding the same one. You have good taste. But I think you might need a bigger size. That's what you think. I like my sweaters a little tight. I laugh and Yuna lets out a giggle. No, this isn't for me. It's for my sister. I hold up the item I bought for myself. This is for me. Oh, well, I think she'll like it. I would hope so, especially since you're getting the same thing. Is your sister younger than you? Yeah, she's in her last year of high school. It seems like you two are close. Really? What makes you say that? Well, teenagers usually go through a phase where they fight with their sibling all the time. But since you're buying her a gift, it seems like you two must get along. Don't, get, don't let this impression fool you. We fight all the time. Ah, yeah, we do. Yuna smiles warmly. That must be really nice. Yeah. How about you? Do you have any siblings? Yuna hesitates and shifts her items from one hand to the other. Finally, she shakes her head. No. She breaks eye contact and looks down. Before she looked away, I noticed a sadness in her eyes. There's something she's not telling me, but I can tell that it hurts her deeply to talk about it. I should respect her feelings and leave it be. I shouldn't pry. Don't ask her about it. It's green. You have to pick it. Yuna seems really uncomfortable by this topic. I shouldn't force her to talk about it, and I should quickly change the subject. I'm sorry. We don't have to talk about this. She gives me a grateful smile. It's okay. Glancing at her hands, I see her carrying the book Hamlet. 
to be or not to be? That is the question. Huh? Your book. She glances at her hands and chuckles. Oh, right. It's for one of my classes. Ah, uh, yeah. I bought the e-versions of my texts. Yuna nods. I did too for most of them, but I find it's easier for me to take notes when I have a physical copy of the text in front of me. She opens the book and flips through it. Hey, that's in English. She blinks at me. Yeah, it's for my English literature class. I switch to speaking English. I didn't know you can speak English. Not very well. She answers in English. Her accent is good, but she speaks with the confidence of someone who's not used to conversing with a native speaker. I switch back to Japanese to make her more comfortable. It seems good to me. Thanks, but I know I still have a lot to work on. Well, if you ever want to practice, I'll be happy to help. Okay, thanks. Next in line? Ah, that's me. We'll catch up next time, okay? She smiles. Of course. I go up to the counter and pay for my items, then wave goodbye to Yuna as I, as I head out of the store. I'm in the campus gym, finishing up my workout. We're going to check up on Yuna next time. I'm going to end the episode here. As always, if you did enjoy the video, make sure to let me know in the comments down below and or by hitting that like button. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to unleash your power by hitting the subscribe button down below today as well. And I'll see all you heroes in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. May the force be with you and have a great rest of your day. Take care.